Alright, so let's talk about bacterial infections. They are different from viruses in a lot of ways. Um, number one, they're curable. Um, antibiotics will clear the bacteria usually completely. Um, just like HIV, women are twice as likely to contract bacterial infections as men because like I said the biological unfairness where on average women are the ones who receive the bodily fluids and then hold them in their mucous membranes it gives an opportunity to um, to become infected at a rate much higher than men. Um, things that can be infected by bacterial infections of course you're thinking obviously the vagina um, I don't know why I don't have you know penis isn't really the right word but you know the reproductive tract in males and females I don't know why this isn't on the list um, I typed these so I only have myself to blame uh, but what might surprise you is that your throat or anus can also get infected with bacterial infections a lot of times people think that oral sex is sort of safe sex or that anal sex would be safe that you um, obviously can't get pregnant from oral or anal sex but people a lot of times have the extended belief that they can't get infections through either of those behaviors and that is absolutely false. You can get catch HIV through um, any of these behaviors. You can get herpes, you can get um, genital warts, I mean you can get all of these in any of your mucous membranes. Condoms are, are effective in reducing the transmission because these are carried in the bodily fluids. So if you can keep the bodily fluids apart then you reduce your risk of transmission. Um, and a lot of times people think, well, bacterial infections aren't that big of a deal. Uh, they're curable with antibiotics. They're, you know, they're the old-fashioned kind of STIs. You know, they don't harm us, but they can cause you to lose your fertility, and they can kill you. Bacterial infections kill people all the time. Um, so these are not things to just let go untreated. That's for sure. So let's go through the list. I got all of these off of Planned Parenthood because they had really good information. So, um, you know, if you are at all interested in finding out more about birth control or about um, bacterial infections. Planned Parenthood is a really good source. Chlamydia, most people do not notice when they have symptoms, which is really, really scary. Um, for men that do notice symptoms, they notice a milky discharge coming out of their penis. And, um, you know, men notice that more often than when women have a milky discharge coming out of their vagina, because women oftentimes have discharges coming out of their vaginas, whereas men rarely have something seeping out of their urethra. So that will cause men to notice it a little bit more often than women. Um, they might have swollen or testi tender testicles. They might. Um, they might not. For women, they might experience... Um, you know, swelling that is kind of painful during penetration in their vagina. And then also they might bleed after they've had intercourse. Like, why is my vaginal lining so sensitive, right? So they might notice these things, but like 90% of people don't even notice they have the symptoms. With gonorrhea, about 40% of women don't notice that they have symptoms and about 10% of men don't notice that they have symptoms. So this one's more noticeable. You've got like 90% of men not noticing chlamydia. You've got about 90% of men noticing gonorrhea. Um, and again with a discharge coming out of the urethra is the most common sign for men to notice. Women again we've got swelling or tenderness of the vulva they might if, if it's progressed enough they might be throwing up because bacterial infections do that um, but that's usually it's progressed pretty far you wouldn't want to rely on well I'm not throwing up but my vagina is kind of tender I'm sure it's not gonorrhea you would want to look for any kind of discharge and um, any kind of swelling or tenderness and get that checked out. Um, things that both males and females might notice you know these are um, signs that the bacterial infection has progressed so if any of these signs are present it's absolutely impossible it's really um, imperative that you go see the the doctor because you, you're starting to to move into the higher level areas of the reproductive tract it can even go up into the urethra and into the bladder and then up into the kidneys and so these are things that you don't ignore these do not ignore even though it might be embarrassing to have to say I think I might have a sexually transmitted infection doctors are accustomed to that um, so you know you go get tested you go get tested and eliminate possible um, interpretations how about syphilis you know for a while people were rarely talking about syphilis and then this came off of the CDC by the way on this slide um, people were rarely talking about syphilis and then they had an outbreak among a bunch of uh, high school students in the Midwest who apparently were having sex parties where they were sort of like 
all having sex with each other and stuff like that and apparently one person was infected and then they all got it um, and so they it sort of came back onto the forefront the primary symptom is uh, that you've been infected is this emergence of a chancre uh, this poor penis has an oozing chancre. They're about the size of a nickel, and you'll notice the penis looks pretty swollen all around the area. Um, th this chancre is where the bacteria actually penetrated the skin. Um, this picture is of a the actual spirochete that carries syphilis, and it basically like twists its way into the skin, and then gets into your bloodstream and starts multiplying. So coming in contact with somebody else's chancre or their bodily fluids um, can transmit it to to your skin and then it gets into your body. So syphilis is kind of like HIV in the sense that it goes through stages of infection and the first stage is what we call the primary stage where you have the chancre present and it burns and you saw what it looked like it's hard to ignore. Um, it starts out kind of flat and about like I said about the size of a nickel and then it starts to ooze. And then it heals up and goes away. So a lot of times people go, well, that was weird, but it's gone now. I guess I'm fine. Then they move into the secondary stage of syphilis infection where the spirochete is infiltrating the body. And a lot of times you'll get rashes on your skin and on your mucous membrane. So in your mouth, in your vagina, in your urethra, um, your penis will feel like pain at, at urination because of the rash inside the urethra, stuff like that. But then that clears up and you enter into this latent stage where you don't have any more symptoms, but now you have enough of the spirochete in your bloodstream and in your bodily fluids that you can start transmitting it. So a person in the latent stage, this can last years and they can be sharing this um, infection with their sexual partners, just like we were saying about HIV, right? Then finally, untreated, this will go into the tertiary stage where you have three different ways that it might manifest itself. The benign method is where it attacks your skin, your bones, your ligaments. The cardiovascular method attacks your um, your cardiovascular system, right? Your heart, your veins and arteries, things like that. And then neurosyphilis, which attacks your brain. I thought I'd show you an example of what they call benign syphilis, because that doesn't look that benign, does it? They call it benign because benign means not that harmful, like it won't kill you. Yeah, you're probably not going to die from having this on your face, but I don't think you're going to like it very much having something like this on your face. And it might not emerge on your face. It might be on your, you know, your arms. It might be, um, it might, your bones might have this kind of stuff on them. And so you have pain, but you know, at least you can't see it or it's on your ligaments. And so you start to think you've got rheumatoid arthritis when in fact you've got um, tertiary syphilis. Now these tertiary syphilis kinds of infections are really rare these days because usually people will catch it earlier on and these things are treatable with antibiotics. So if you can catch it while it's in the primary or even the secondary stage, then um, you can prevent the immersion, emergence of the tertiary stage. Uh, I just thought I'd make a nod to the belief that um, that old-timey bad guy, um, Al Capone, there I got it, sorry, couldn't think of his name. Um, they think he had neurosyphilis and that he went crazy in jail and died of neurosyphilis. Um, but it, today it's less common because we have antibiotics that can treat syphilis at the earlier stages. Um, also I wanted to mention the Tuskegee so-called study um, that some of you might have heard of Back in the 40s, they identified a group of black men in the South who were uh, syphilis positive, and they didn't have any way of treating it back then. So they were gonna, um, they wanted to follow the progression of the disease, and so they told these guys that, hey, you, the government's gonna give you free health care. We'll come every year and give you a physical and all these things. Do you want to participate? And the guys were like, sure, why not? Free health care, I'd love it. Well, unbeknownst to them, they were positive with syphilis and. Uh, because the researchers didn't want the patients to do anything or change their behavior, they didn't tell the patients that they were positive for syphilis. And so these guys were still having unprotected sex with their sex partners and all sorts of really, you know, dangerous and unethical things were going on in the study. And then here's the worst part. In the 50s, when antibiotics were invented and you know, doctors figured out pretty quickly that syphilis was um, would respond, they didn't offer the treatment to the men in the, in the Tuskegee study and, and they said that they, well, because we wanted to see how the, the disease progressed. Um, so 
it wasn't until the 90s that all this stuff came to light and they they paid retribution to the families but it was a little too little too late well here's the saddest part about this whole story that's horrible that's horrible right but guess what it still goes on uh, the government in um, El Salvador just recently did it to a bunch of uh, people with low IQs who were in mental hospitals that were positive for syphilis and they didn't treat them just to see what would happen. Um, we already know how this progresses. I don't know why people would need to study it. So um, it's just some kind of really mean, unethical thing that keeps being replicated in different places. And I might have just besmirched El Salvador. It might not have been El Salvador. It might have been Colombia or something. I can't remember. Let's put it this way. Uh, either Central or South American country, no farther south than Bolivia. I can tell you that, but I can't remember which country it was. Uh, our final kind of infection would be parasitic infections. Um, there are some that get in our bodies, like trichomoniasis, which oftentimes comes from oral sex, analingus. Um, my thing is not working. There we go. These uh, little amoebas can cause a discharge out of the genitals so for males out the urethra for females out the vagina um, it's treated with antibiotics even though they're parasites they it seems to kill them antibiotic means living things right so it's against living things so um, these are this is very treatable but a lot of times people don't notice the symptoms until it's progressed pretty hard um, on the body the most famous of the parasitic STIs would be pubic lice and this is a zoom in on what a pubic louse looks like while well, it's clinging to your pubic hair and then of course it lays its eggs at the base of the hair but just slightly under the skin so it's like really itchy having those eggs laid around and of course the treatment for pubic lice would be to uh, use lice shampoo to kill them off so that's enough of creepy stuff that can happen to us all right next chapter will be slightly less gross picture filled okay see you in the next chapter